It looks like it's the season of black artists coming out to take a stand against the industry. And Terrence Howard is the latest artist to come out to speak about it. He is finally revealing what made him run away from Hollywood and child the things that goes on behind the scenes are just disturbing. Now black men coming out to speak on this isn't anything new because we've seen a few of them step out in the past to talk about how the industry tried to emasculate black men. But nobody really paid attention to them. And when people did listen, they didn't believe the men and accused them of clout chasing. But the situation seems to be gradually changing now because Terrence Howard is now speaking on the same situation and people are actually listening this time around because Terrence is claiming that the real reason he ran away from Hollywood and decided to retire as an actor is that the industry was trying to emasculate him. And when he refused, they started spreading the word around that he was difficult to work with, which is something that we've seen and heard a lot over the years. Now, I'm not saying that Terrence is perfect because he has had more than his fair share of controversies. And at a point, it was starting to seem like his controversies were bigger than his entire career because he just couldn't stay out of trouble. Back in 2010, Terrence got in trouble for putting paws on his first wife. And while this was a scandal, it wasn't the first time he got in trouble for putting paws on his significant other. In 2011, his second wife, Michelle Gint, filed for and got a restraining order on him, accusing him of DV. He hasn't denied these allegations and has spoken about them freely in interviews, like the time he admitted to slapping his second wife in front of their kids. He said, she was talking to me real strong and I lost my mind and slapped her in front of the kids. That's messed up on so many levels, but it did absolutely nothing to his career and he continued to book acting gigs. In fact, after his confession, he continued to get some pretty big roles, including the lead role of Lucius Lyon in the hit show Empire. But for some reason, he randomly announced in December 2022 that he was retiring from the industry. This was kind of weird because like I said, he was still very much in demand. Well, as it turns out, the answer to that is quite sneaky because he claimed that the industry was trying to force him into some uncomfortable situations that he considered to be emasculating. Terrence has since come out of retirement, but that hasn't stopped him from speaking about the shady part of the industry that tried to get him to wear dresses. This isn't a new accusation because a couple of black men have come out to accuse producers of trying to force them into wearing dresses in movies, even when it does nothing for the plot of the movie and is a completely unnecessary scene. Dave Chappelle has been trying to tell us for years that the industry tried to make black men effeminate on purpose by forcing them to wear dresses and act feminine in movies. This has led to a number of tricky situations in the past where he beefed with several industry powerhouses over this. He even had a very publicized beef with Comedy Central and after that, he almost left the industry. He later went on Oprah's show to talk about the real reason he left the industry and moved to Africa, claiming that he turned down a massive 50 million deal because he was being pressured to put on a dress by Martin Lawrence. Like when I connect dots that maybe shouldn't be connected, I don't know. But certain dots, like when I see that they put every black man in the movies in a dress at some point in their career, I'll be connecting them down like, why all these brothers gotta wear a dress? This happened to me. I'm doing a movie with Martin. Yeah. The movie's going good. So I walk in a trailer. I'm like, man, this must be the wrong trailer because there's a dress in here. <laughs> they come in. It's the writer comes in. I think he's the writer. He's like, Dave, listen. We got this hilarious scene where Martin's sneaking out of jail, so he disguises you as a prostitute. <laughs> and he put this dress on, and it, huh? What? The prostitute? No, nah, I'm not doing that. I don't feel comfortable with it. And before y'all start talking about how Dave could have had a conversation about how he didn't want to wear a dress, let me just stop you there because he did have that conversation. He revealed that he had a sit down conversation with the producers of the movie and told them that he didn't want to wear the dress because he felt like it was completely unnecessary for the movie. It served no purpose to the movie and could have easily been removed from the movie with no changes to the plot. But instead of trying to come to an agreement with him and trying to work something out with him, the producers instead brought in the director and they tried to gaslight Dave, calling him difficult and impossible to work with and trying to force him to wear the dress even after he repeatedly said no. It should have been in a discussion. What? You don't feel comfortable with it. I mean, it's a hilarious bit. All the greats have done it. So, well, if all the greats have done it, it's kind of hacky, right? You're right. So why don't we just not do it? Because I don't feel comfortable wearing a dress. Oh, come on, Dave. Listen, we, we got it all set up. We we're supposed to shoot. Every, every minute your waist costs this much money. You know, the pressure comes in. Huh. 
He said, I'm now I'm not wearing no dress, man. I'm funnier than a dress. Just give me something funny to say. I don't even wear no dress to be funny. What am I, Milton Berle? Blah, 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 blah. You know, we're going like this. And then finally he's like, ah, and he, he leaves. And then like the director comes, Dave, it really would be great if you wear the dress. What is wrong? What is this, uh, Brokeback Mountain in here? So, <laughs> so then, <laughs> I wear the, wear the dress. I don't want to wear the dress. I don't want to wear this dress. You know what I mean? This is, uh, oh, gosh, this guy's so difficult. They leave. Now the producers comes, come on, David, would be so great. I mean, and then I started thinking about it. All the comics that I've seen, man, you know, strong brothers, why, why are they putting us in these dresses? But y'all know how stubborn Dave is because he kept his foot down and the producers eventually had to give up because Dave made it clear that there was no way that he was going to give in to the pressure. But hold on, because it gets sneakier because it turned out that they had an alternative written down. According to him, there was another version of the script that they had written just in case he didn't give in to the pressure to wear the dress. For one, this meant that he was right about how the scene and him wearing a dress was completely unnecessary to the movie. On the other hand, why would they pressure him for so long when they knew that there was another script already written that would work just well? The minute it was clear I was adamant, I'm not wearing a dress, I'm not wearing the dress. All right, fine, think of something else. That comes back 10 minutes later, the whole new scene, how, damn, how did you write the scene so fast? You know, it's like, so you gotta take a stand. But Dave was not the only one who had something to say about this because Kevin Hart also kind of hinted that this was a normal thing in Hollywood. While Kevin never explicitly said that he would never wear a dress, he did hint that he was also being pressured by the industry to wear dresses. The Oscar nominee, Kavenshane <laughs> Wallace. So it wasn't all that surprising a couple of years down the line when Kevin appeared in a SNL skit wearing a dress a few years later. A lot of fans believe that he had sold his integrity to the industry by wearing the dress, especially since his career really took off after he wore the dress and he became insanely successful getting big juicy roles and deals with Netflix. Well, this is where Cat Williams hopped on the trend when he had an interview where he was supposed to promote the movie he had been in. Scary Movie 5, and the conversation turned to the role of black men in the industry. The Kevin Hart topic came up, and when he was asked to comment about the backlash that Kevin got for wearing a dress on SNL, well, let's just say that Kat had a lot to say about that. Kevin doesn't have to worry about what people are gonna say about him wearing a dress because of the long line of dress wearing people before him. <laughs> so now we have Big Mama's house one, two, and three. Yeah. I've never seen Medea in a pantsuit. I think she wears dresses. <laughs> so now I'm saying, why are we picking on poor little Kevin Hart? Because it was his turn next. Okay. At the time, people kind of dismissed his concerns and his statement, saying that he was a conspiracy theorist who was jealous of Kevin's success. But on the other hand, there were people who believed his words, especially considering the things that we've been seeing black artists do. Fans have pointed out that there seem to be more and more actors who are starting to find success after cross-dressing on camera, citing movies like Big Mama's House, White Chicks, The Nutty Professor, and Norbit. In recent times, artists like ASAP Rocky and Jonathan Majors have also been facing accusations of being effeminate instead of being strong black men. Rock got a lot of backlash as a result of his Vogue cover with Rihanna, where fans felt like he came across as being submissive. Jonathan Majors, on the other hand, got a lot of backlash for his cover of Ebony Magazine because fans felt like the photos were emasculating. And recently, also in Club Shay Shay interview, Cat Williams revealed that this emasculating business happens more often than we know, and that it often comes with a very juicy paycheck. He claimed that he has had to turn down $50 million paychecks a couple of times. Be uh well, Terrace backed Cat up on that, and he confirmed that there is indeed an agenda to emasculate black men in Hollywood. For those who don't remember, Terrence had a juicy role in the first Iron Man movie as James Rhodes, and he was expected to reprise the role in the second movie. But when the second movie came out, out, he had been replaced by Don Cheadle. There were rumors that the reason he got fired was that he had a temper and was impossible to work with, but he recently came out to slam those rumors, claiming that the reason he got fired was that he was standing on business and refused to be emasculated. In the recent interview, he said, my daddy taught me, never take the vertebrae out of your back or the base out of your throat. I ain't raising sheep, I raise men. Stay a man. Being a man comes with a curse 
because it's not a society made for men to flourish anymore. Everything is androgynous, you know? The more successful men are now the effeminate. But he didn't stop there because in a recent interview, Terrence once again confirmed that there is a secret plot to effeminize black men because they see strong black men as a threat. In the interview, she said, the man has been demonized. With the new formula, most men are made to be effeminate and not have their power or sense of strength. They allow white men to be able to be strong, but when it's black men, it's seen as a threat. He also said, I don't want to remove a few chromosomes to fit in someone's story. So I feel they need to expand their stories to allow men to be men and simultaneously appreciate a woman's beauty. Terrence's revelations got people talking and they left comments saying, I admire anyone who refuses to compromise his morals and values for money and fame. What a breath of fresh air to know that some men remain strong and masculine regardless of insignificant pressures. And he got blackballed for being the angry black man for speaking out and saying no, just like Monique got blackballed for being the angry black woman for the same reason. When you go against the devil, this is what happens. Big ups to everyone who says no to the devils in Hollywood. Y'all go ahead and drop your thoughts in the comments, then check out this next video.